go. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Down to shorts. Yeah. Again. All it's right. It's the, the, the balmy 50s this morning. Yeah, it's in the 50s. And even a little bit warmer than yesterday morning. So we're, we're start breaking it, break out the shorts again. Yep. Might as well for like one last hurrah. Yep. I rolled my sleeves up, so it's clearly warm. It's good. <laughs> That's it. So we're in uh, Genesis chapter 44, and we're going to be uh, taking a look at um, Joseph still putting his brothers to the test. Yeah. We see if are they legitimately repentant, like are they legitimately sorrow, sorry for what, you know, he's going to do that testing by seeing how would they uh, treat, I think, Benjamin, really, in the midst mm -hmm. of all of this. So his... Joseph's actual blood, blood brother. Let's see how he's going to treat now. So Joseph has, still has not revealed himself. He's not going to reveal himself yet. Uh, he's still got a little bit more testing here that's going on. Yep. <laughs> Hopefully he's not savoring that too much for the testing. So jo uh, chapter 44, and uh, Adam's going to kick us off here. Okay. Now Joseph gave these instructions to the steward of his house. Fill the men's sack with as much food as they can carry and put each man's silver in the mouth of his sack. Then put my cup, the silver one, in the mouth of the youngest one's sack, along with the silver for his grain. And he did as Joseph said. As morning dawned, the men were sent on their way with their donkeys. They had not gone far from the city when Joseph said to his steward, Go after those men at once, and when you catch up with them, say to them, Why have you repaid good with evil? Isn't this the cup my masters drink from, and also uses for divination? This is a wicked thing we have done, or you have done. When we caught up with them, he repeated those words to them. But they said to him, Why does my Lord say such things? Far be it from your servants to do anything like that. We even brought back to you from the land of Canaan the silver we found inside the mouths of our sacks. So why would we steal silver or gold from your master's house? If any of your servants is found to have it, he will die, and the rest of us will become my Lord's slaves. Very well, very well then, he said. Let it be as you say. Whoever is found to have it will become my slave. The rest of you will be free from blame. Each of them quickly lowered his sack to the ground and opened it. Then the steward proceeded to search, beginning with the oldest and ending with the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. At this they tore their clothes. Then they all loaded <coughs> their donkeys and returned to the city. Joseph was still in the house when Judah and his brothers came in, and they threw themselves to the ground before him. Joseph said to him, What is this you have done? Don't you know that a man like me can find things out by divination? What can we say to my Lord? Judah replied. What can we say? How can we prove our innocence? God has uncovered your servant's guilt. We are now my Lord's slaves. We ourselves and the one who, has found, who was found to have the cup. But Joseph said, Far be it from me to do such a thing. Only the man who was found to have the cup will become my slave. The rest of you go back to your father in peace. Then Judah went up to him and said, Please, my lord, let your servant speak a word to my lord. Do not be angry with your servant. Though you are equal to Pharaoh himself, my lord asked his servants, Do you have a father or a brother? And we answered, We have an aged father, and there is a young son born to him in his old age. His brother is dead, and he is the only one of, a, of his mother's sons left and his father loves him. Then you said to your servants, bring him down to me so that I can see him for myself. And we said to my Lord, the boy cannot leave his father. If he leaves him, his father will die. But you told your servants, unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you will not see my face again. When we went back to your servant, my father, we told him what my Lord had said. Then our father said, go back and buy a little more food. But we said, We cannot go down. Only if our youngest brother is with us will we go. We cannot see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife bore me two sons. One of them went away from me, and I said, He has surely been torn to pieces, and I have not seen him since. If you take this one from me too, and harm comes to him, you will bring my gray head down to the grave in misery. So now... If the, if the boy is not with us when I go back to your servant, my father, and my father, whose life is closely bound with the boy's life, sees that the boy isn't there, he will die. Your servants will bring the gray head of our father down to the grave in sorrow. 
Your servant guaranteed the boy's safety to my father. I said, if I do not bring him back to you, I will bear the blame before you, my father, all my life. Now then, please let your servant remain here as the Lord's slave in place of the boy, and let the boy return to his bro with his brothers. How can I go back to my father if the boy is not with me? No, do not let me see the, mi see the misery that would come upon my father. Wow. All right, let's, yeah. <laughs> let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. Your word is truth. We pray, Lord God, that you would teach us now from your word and lead us and guide us, Lord God. Help us to uh, reflect, reflect the truth of who you are and what you have done for us in our life of bringing us back to yourself. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, um, Joseph has this uh, this this plan, uh, I guess, scheme, whatever plan. plan. Right. Uh, he puts the uh, silver in the sack of Benjamin, which is his bro blood brother and the, the youngest of them all. And, uh, you know, there had been this whole thing of dad did not want to send Benjamin down there. Because he's like he he's he's now the favorite because Rachel was his favorite wife and she's dead, so that's the only one that's left in his mind and um, he did not want to send him down, and now this occurs, and um, I think what is really going to be moving to Joseph is Judah's reaction to all this. As I said yesterday, Judah becomes the spokesman now from this point on. And Judah is uh, the line through whom Jesus will come. And so he becomes a spokesman and he is offering himself in the place of Benjamin. So this is a lot of foreshadowing, right? Yeah. So, Because Jesus is not going to only uh, offer himself for one person. He's offering himself in the place of all the people of the whole world. Uh, and and um, uh, so that we would no longer have to be slave to sin, he makes himself, you know, r reduces himself, makes himself a slave, humbles himself, makes himself nothing, so that we can have a relationship with our Father in heaven. So Judah is kind of foreshadowing this um, in saying, you know what, take me as a slave. Let the boy return to his father. And so Joseph is getting a pretty good idea of, mm -hmm. of where the heart of the brothers are now uh, they seems like they've changed there as I said though before <clears throat> you can see in their interactions with each other um, how this unresolved guilt in their life has wreaked havoc on their lives because anything bad that happened oh did I tell you we should have uh, not you know, sold the boy into slavery. Did not tell you we should have done this and didn't that. This is God bringing his wrath down upon us because of what we've done. So unresolved guilt in a person's life just chews them apart. Mm -hmm. And it's better to go to the Lord and confess. He knows what we've done already. Confess, and he wants to bring his healing hand to us, his healing touch. So um, I, that's, a, that's a big thing I would encourage for you. But Judah now is showing a, a really compassionate heart, I think, in the midst of this. So, uh, I don't know, there's, um, is there any other things that you kind of jumped out at you at this? It's pretty straightforward, but... Um, yeah, just that, I mean, they definitely passed the test <laughs> towards the end, and I don't know, it's kind of a... Real-world examples kind of help me sometimes have, like, a kind of a more personal reaction to, like, like the, the mercy of Jesus. Like, you see something like this, and that again even though that's a small flavor of it it gives you like that yeah kind of personal like something you can uh, kind of relate with like then, like someone's paying he's paying a price i mean you yeah. just think to yourself okay i care about my dad and my youngest brother enough to say i'm going to offer myself as a slave yeah. i'm never going to be able to go home again i'm going to be here stuck in and uh, stuck in this place so that's kind of something I can wrap my mind around a little bit and then the love of Jesus is infinitely more than that you're right yeah I mean and it's even hard to wrap my mind around that right. I'm like oh, well too bad young brother <laughs> right. I'm blown out of here yeah, <laughs> no, no. yeah. so, so uh, it's just 
it, it's hard. I think it's hard for us to think in those terms to opt to sacrifice so much for someone else. Um, you know, when I'd be, of course, today we'd be like, wait, I need to call my lawyer. We're going to lawyer this thing up right. and you got to prove that we took this. We <laughs> or like the fingers come out and like, no, you did this. No, you did this. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, none of us did this. Come on. We want a fair trial. Right. In there. And um, anyway, there's just a, there's a lot. And I I like how they, they say a couple different times it's going to bring, bring his gray hair de- down to the grave. It's a way to kind of put it. It's like, yeah, yeah, your dad's going to die and um, he's going to die of sorrow. Right. Right. At this point. Something attacking you. Yeah. Something. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. They're sneaking in and, and trying to get us in there. All right. So, um, anyway, I, I, I really think um, this is a good lesson of forgiveness in the midst of everything's going on in our, in our nation right now. And my my heart is breaking for our nation. I think this is kind of like a we're like a tinderbox. Uh, every injustice, real or perceived, is is rank is ratcheted up to the to the nth level and we want we want uh, a, a, a society in which there's equitable justice and, and all of that but what's going on right now is just so on edge so mm-hmm. um, destructive and, and, and hurtful that I don't think it's going to bring us peace you know they think that we're going to get peace through these these things so I think we can learn lessons from this and, and, and uh, what reconciliation might look like, what, what peace might look like, uh, what forgiveness uh, lo- might look like. You know, when we live this life, you're going to be burned, you're going to be hurt by people, and you have to decide what are you going to do with that. Are you going to like hammer back and uh, punch back? You get me, I'm punching you back twice as hard, right? You know, so. We have to make a choice in what direction we're going to go, and my concern is, as a nation, that we're just there's no even attempts at at uh, peace and reconciliation. It seems like it's all or nothing. Yeah, yeah we've got to we, we got to kind of go down. So, be in prayer for our nation. Uh, I'm I'm concerned. There's just it's again it's just a tinderbox. Think no matter. You know, the skeptic in me says no matter who wins in, in the upcoming election, it's going to be chaos. <laughs> you know, so if you're putting your hope in one of the, the candidates as if like, oh, that's going to bring peace to the U.S. No, mm-hmm. not, I, I don't think so. Yeah. Our only hope is in Christ. We need to turn to him. We need to repent. And we need to humble ourselves before God Almighty. Uh, we're paying a price for turning our back on God. And we need to turn to him. So let's uh, let's pray pray for that father we we humble ourselves before you and we acknowledge um, our own uh, desire to have justice done when when an injustice is done to us and when we're perceived wrong and we want to strike back and Lord God help us as Jesus said to turn the other cheek to love our enemies uh, to really focus in on what is really ailing this nation Uh, we have turned our back on you and we cry out to you and Lord God we pray that we as your church as your people would repent and turn to you that repentance starts with the people of God that repentance starts with me with all of us individually um, and that we would turn to you and we pray Lord God for our leaders that they would turn to you and humble themselves and seek you with all their heart mind and spirit we pray for peace in uh, Louisville and the difficult things that are going on there. We pray for um, for a way to move forward that there can be dialogue and reconciliation that can occur in the midst of troubling things. Help us, Lord God. We are weak. You are strong. We are in need of your grace. We are in need of your mercy. We are in need of your forgiveness. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day.